Everyone thinks he's like this tough kid. I don't and I, and I, when he steps into the ring with me, I'm going to expose him for the f***ing b that he is. I knock him oh out God. two rounds. Hold on easy. a second. That's my business part you're talking about. <laughs> Worst music taste in history. No Shut patience. Shut the f*** up. You think because you get abs for a couple minutes for the WWE, you can just talk to your friends. No, you listen to garbage. No, okay, dude, hold on a second. <laughs> Terrible music. No, hold on. Hold on. I have to say this. I We were talking earlier about Elton John, one of the most important- Shut no, the no, uh, stop. Dog. No, stop. No, I was talking about stop. Elton John. Stop. No, no, no. One of the, not, not you. This in the not you. Not you. One of the biggest musical tastemakers of all time. And George said the following statement. Who is Ellen John? He's a he's no, a he's not. Fun. He's not around. He's Mike, dead. Mike gets sensitive when you make fun of the music that came out when he was around. So, Elton John is old. I just music. want my friends to be rooted deeply in culture. That's it. The Bruno Mars you listen to and all the shit you listen to is a, a love child of those tastemakers and creators. You need to school yourself, brother, before you get schooled. All right, Mike. With that threat, welcome back to Impulsive, <laughs> the number one podcast in the world. Thank you guys for listening, watching, viewing, and subscribing. If you're not subscribed yet, go ahead and click that button. We just passed 4 million subscribers. We're pretty stoked about it. It's been a good week. We've been fired up. A lot of podcasts. Uh, by the time this episode comes out, I'll have done WWE SummerSlam. Hopefully, I did not break any joints. A little worried about breaking some parts of my body. But none of that matters because we have a very important guest in the house today. He's our number one recurring guest, and he only comes on when he has stuff to promote. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> introducing my brother, Yay! Jake Paul. <laughs> Thank you. You got a lot of stuff to promote. <laughs> man. How you doing? Good, man. Were you drinking coffee? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, why? It's 7 p.m. The fuck? I go to sleep at like 4 a.m. You stay up that late before even when you're training? Before I fight at midnight. What? You can't get the brain clock ready to go to sleep when I'm about to fight. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Have you adjusted your schedule to, to be a boxer schedule? Yeah, for the past, like, two years. <laughs> Elaborate. All I do is stay up late to, to train at night and optimize for being awake at midnight, which is when you fight. Dude, I always heard Floyd Mayweather did this. I heard he, I heard he would train at, you know, 2, 3, 4 a.m. in the morning. He'd call his sparring partners and be like, yo, be here now at this time. And he, he'd wake up at, like, 4 p.m., 5 p.m. Are you waking up that late? Uh, waking up at like 2 p.m. latest. But what if you have to fight in like uh, London or like something like that? You know what I'm saying? Is that why you were too scared to fight Tommy Fury? Bro, fuck you guys. <laughs> 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 no, but seriously, what, on a serious note, because that was a joke. What happens if you have to fight elsewhere besides you just, the... You just change your clock Got for it. that. Got it. You, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> that, uh, what's up? Hey, buddy. Oh, shit. We haven't shot this studio in a while, Jake. So, guys, we're in our Puerto Rico studio, and we're falling apart. <laughs> to, to say it lightly, yeah, I have my headphones on. There we yeah, go. that's a, that's new. Is I the, can hear everything that's going on. I, the way your head is shaped <laughs> is really funny with those on. That's why I don't want it on, bro. I knew it. I knew I'm the kid that looks stupid with headphones. <laughs> so square. You have a block so head. Square. I do have a block head. You're a Lego. Well, you have a fight coming up. Soon. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, Jake. You do have a fight coming up. Big um, one. By the time this comes out, you'll be fighting in three days. Hasim Rahman Jr. Uh, Hasim, Hasim Rahman Noodle. <laughs> Rahman Noodle. Is that Jr. how you say his dude, Rockman, you say his name? Rockman. Hasim Rockman Jr. There's no, there's no hard K. It's just middle. how you pronounce Somebody it. Somebody ripped ass, and I'm not going to pretend like they didn't, because I'm fucking dying. Yo, Roblox, take it easy. We're talking about fighting, dude. <laughs> <laughs> just chill out. Yeah, you're kind of derailing the podcast. <laughs> you're derailing my nose. Is that you? Is that you? Nah, bro. I'm I'm chilling. <laughs> oh my god, dude! It looks it like it might have been you. Jeff. Yeah, yeah, it was me. And then I called myself out yeah, on the podcast. Was... <laughs> my eyes are watering, bro. What do you eat? Whoever smelt it dealt it. Whoever did the All rhyme right. did the so, crime. Okay, sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I've asked. I've asked you this. Did you ask a question, or you just said you have a fight coming up? I don't know who okay. I am. Okay, perfect, <laughs> Jake. <laughs> I've done this show with you, I think, before five fights, and I've asked the same question to you before all five five fights, and you won all five fights. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing to train differently for Ra Rashid Ahmed Johnson? <laughs> <laughs> what is his name, dude? Uh, his name is Asim Rockman Jr. And uh, I am not training differently, man. 
I always treat my opponent like they're God, like they're Godzilla, like they're King Kong, like they're the best fighter in the whole entire world. Uh, so nothing really has changed. He is a southpaw, which for the novices, this is orthodox. Left foot forward. And this is southpaw. <laughs> right foot forward. Is right this your forward. first time? So he's a southpaw. It's my first time going up against a southpaw. So we've changed that a little bit. But other than that, the training stays the same, man. I'm in shape. I'm ready to fight anyone, anytime, any place. That's truly the same. And ah, man, this camp has been so good, so electric. This week has been so much fun. And going to knock him out inside of five rounds. I don't like the narrative that you took for this fight involving me. <laughs> you, Which fight? Which? You, you used me as a pawn. Oh, for saying that, like you said that I didn't, I shouldn't do the fight, right? I said Isn't something. Si I said something similar, dude. Who is this fucking guy? Mike th can't even say his name right. Akeem Olajuwon. How do we know he's gonna be that much of a pool that people want? I mean, anyone watch? who's a boxing purist, I think the whole right. boxing audience will tune in, which is different. I don't think the boxing purists really have watched my fights, but they all know his dad. His dad knocked out Lennox Lewis, yeah. the legend. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. all of the boxing crowd, I think mostly the people that were watching me before were the influencer fan base and the MMA crowd because I was fighting MMA fighters. Now I think it'll be the influence crowd, the MMA crowd. And the boxing crowd who will be like, wow, this is his first time going up against a professional boxer who's legit. He's bigger than him. He has more reach than him. This is a massive risk. And then the haters are going to be like, oh, wow. Well, he might get knocked out this time since this kid's actually the toughest opponent he's had yet. He, he is big, dude. Big. When, when, I, <laughs> big. when I stood in between them for their face off in New York, he was as tall as me and about 20 pounds heavier. And I'm 205 right now, right? He's probably he's got to be 225, 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, yeah. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. You know, and uh, I'm going to use my speed to my advantage. That's going to be the difference in this fight is the speed. You know, I don't think he's going to be able to get to me. You can have all the power you want in the world. That's like you could hit a heavy bag as hard as you want. It's because it's standing there. I'm not going to be there for him to hit me. And, you know, th that's really the case. And sparring against heavyweights in the camp this far and yesterday, uh, it's been apparent that they can't hit me as good. And, and you guys are fighting at 200 pounds? Yes. You're not worried about him making weight? That's a lot of that's a lot I of am worried. Go. I am worried. I am worried. Uh, but I think he's doing it. His weight was at like 210 uh, yesterday. So he's doing it gradually and everything should be good to go. Speaking of New York, MS Easy, Mike. MSG, the greatest arena on earth. And I don't care how cultured you are. That's a fact. How do you feel about the idea of you and your brother, but but you mainly, both having performed for what will be a sold out, potentially sold out event at the fucking garden. Within it, a week. Like within a week. It bro. doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like me and my friends were just watching you perform and like beating up the Miz and whatever. And I was just sitting there like giddy. This is insane. Like what brothers in the history have ever been headlining Madison Square Garden? Back to back like that, Jonas Brothers. At but the they do it time. At the same but time. They do it together. Jonas Brothers. What do you think they're gonna come and sing the song at different times? I I, I hate to sound pompous, but I do want to echo that man. Like for one second, damn, can I can I pat you on the back? Go oh, good shit, good shit. Like wow, man, I was I was getting ready to uh uh do my WWE performance, and someone came up to me. They're like, "Do you know that you are on the front of this building, and your brother is on the backside?" It's hilarious. And, and like, how, how do you comprehend this information? Your tweet in response to the one that I mentioned about being on both sides is like, it's just two kids from Ohio, right? And <laughs> that's really true, dude. <laughs> yeah, like, what the fuck? How do we get here? What's going on? But when I, when, when I saw that, uh, the poster of you on um, MSG, I, I literally thought of the time that we, there was a stage we were doing Snapchat like story things and you had me hold this boom box. And we're playing like the dumbest songs and you're doing the dumbest things. And I'm like, this motherfucker is fighting together. <laughs> Madison Square Garden. The Vine days were goofy and we're not always proud of what we made. But they did get, get us here and we've capitalized in a really significant, significant way. Uh, and, and, and I, I want to let you know that Madison Square Garden, you've heard it, right? But that is the most fucking electric arena ever. I was there for Serrano Taylor's, the loudest Crazy. arena I've ever been in. My ears were like ringing after when I got home. It was that loud. But it's so crazy, man, what we're doing. And 
I even hit up Nikisa. I was like, yo, we need to have a reality show. Like, how come there's no Paul reality show that's documenting all of the this shit the that's time. going on? Talk and like all the little side quests and characters like, what are Mike and George up to? What are, what's Greg Paul Greg up Paul to? Greg Paul is the big one. What? Put a camera on that guy at the ranch. He could have his own reality show. He wants show. a fight. He wants a fight. Yeah, he's like beefing Everyone, with actually. Up. Not even just one individual. <laughs> Everyone. He wants to fight everyone. I, I get text updates from him at the ranch. you have any idea what's going on there? Something with a hummingbird is going Cats, on. Cats, hummingbirds. Huh? Dog, the kittens are getting mauled out there. Oh, <laughs> I hate to By say By what? It. Rattlesnake? Uh, Bob, uh, natural Bob, illness? Bobcats, Bob probably. Bobcat caught Man. someone. In a, I don't know. But you it's... could just say that they're pussies. There is. <laughs> 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 this guy's good. That's something I've always wondered about your <clears throat> your mind and how you've been working over the past you know year to two years is do you ever feel uh you know conflicted or weighed down by being both the business side and the athletic side of the operation because it's like the 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 things that fighters would never worry about no they don't give really that much of a fuck how many asses are in the seats but you're thinking about that shit prior to the fight does that affect you bro 24 7 i'm thinking about the event how to make it the best how to sell it the best how to build it up, how to promote it. Like that is my life. It consumes me and where other boxers just like show up. But that's what makes me different. That's that's also why I am who I am. But it is annoying sometimes. And I, I complain sometimes to my girlfriend, Julie. I was like, man, I need a fucking award. Like I need a gold star for all this work that I do. It's all these, common. all these. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Julia ordered a gold star in the uh, mail. Uh, how big? Uh, like this big. Whoa. It's a golden star trophy. And she gave it to me and was like, yo, you work your ass off. Like everyone around you sees it. You do more than you go above and beyond constantly. And it goes down to every little aspect, the production, the just I'm, I'm so involved. And I don't know. I think it's good, though. I'm not complaining. It just it is a lot of work. Um, it is also a big reward. Yes. You know, these 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 fights got big paychecks. Yeah. The other side of it, obviously, is very lucrative. And that's you know, the business hat coming on and knowing that the better the event does, the, the better my business does. So you get in what you what you put in. And I don't think a lot of boxers are really willing to do that. Uh, I don't think they take the easy way out or they hope their promoter will just do all the work for them. Yo, met a new girl. What the fuck am I going to do with her, bro? Yeah, I got, I got something for you. Oh. Today's episode sponsored by SeatGeek. SeatGeek, oh. we love you. SeatGeek puts tickets from all over the web in one place to make buying simple. Summer's here, guys. It's time to hit a festival, a music festival, major game, whether it's football, baseball, basketball, concerts, MMA, anything. SeatGeek is the absolute best place to buy tickets. We've got the app on our phone right here. Check it out. And if uh, we needed to buy a ticket to a Jake Paul fight that was taking place this weekend, <laughs> We got canceled. SeatGeek would be the place to do so. <laughs> so. It might be a good idea to start searching now. They rate every ticket from zero to 10 to make sure you're getting a good deal. Green means good. Red means bad. We got the hookup for you guys as well. Use the promo code LOGAN for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That is $20 off your first purchase with the promo code LOGAN. Make sure to click the link in the description to download the app now. Thank you, SeatGeek. We love you. Back to the show. Speaking of work, why is Tommy Fury such a pussy? <laughs> What does that have to do with work? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, is, uh, uh, I no, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really I, curious. I, I, I'm I, so shocked and I, that I, that happened, bro. Are you? Like, are you? Because no, because I told you, Jake. Point. I told you, and I told you so before we took the fight with Tommy. Tom, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I recognize flake behavior, and the first time he pulled out from your guys' fight, that to me. Smelled like flake behavior, not 100%. not like on some serious shit. And the second time when you said you want to fight him, I I like it, right? I like the fight, but the man just doesn't have it in him. He doesn't have that f that fire that his older brother has. I think it hits him when the pressure starts to build, when the mm. fight's actually confirmed, and he's like, "Wow, I actually have to go up against this kid." And he's fought all easy people who are put in there to lose. So when there's a real killer against you. I think that pressure sets in and he just keeps on getting exposed by his own family. Even his dad was like, yeah, I told him not to do the fight because he was out of shape and fat and traveling around the world and getting drunk with Molly at dinners and eating all this food and shit. So like he said it was because of his visa, but who knows? He didn't. He who knows if he even went to the airport, right? There's no pictures of one of the most famous celebrities in the UK at London Heathrow Airport. That's like a celebrity going to the LAX and. Not getting photographs. There, so who knows if he even went to the? Was there no verification on the that story that it was based on his uh, affiliation with? It's all hearsay. 
Yeah. It's all it's all hearsay. That's his excuse. But can, that can was I, the excuse, right? That was the excuse. Can I be honest with you though? Regardless of whether or not it's an excuse and the fact that it did happen and it's extremely <clears throat> embarrassing and he is kind of tainting the Fury name, I think he made the right decision because he can pull out right and everyone can can tell him he's scared and you know you're a pussy, you're living in your brother's shadow, whatever. But that's not as bad as yep. being cold clock, knocked out, horizontal yeah, on true. the canvas by you. Think about that. That, that, is that, true. that lasts forever, dude. This is just going to be a little window of time for like a year. People are going to be like, oh, Tommy, you backed out, whatever. His family didn't really set him up for like the best. They literally said, remove your last name if you lose this. <laughs> like imagine like your family, like instead of be like, dude, don't worry, we'll still love you forever and always. They're like, no, if you lose this, you're not you're related change to us. Your name. We hate you. Yeah. Like that's fucked up. Especially because he looks up to him and shit. Yeah, it's it's bad for him, man. He's he's a clown, but it is smart. I mean, if we would fight, he would be knocked out. So it's whatever world you want to deal with. It's crazy you're a boxer now, man. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't really make any sense. <laughs> like, you're it really a funny. boxer. It's what you want to do. Yeah, I want to be the light heavyweight champion of the world. And I will become the light heavyweight champion of the world. Can I, can I just speak on that point quickly? I, I'm just going to. Address the elephant in the room that you can't even see yet. Can I say what who was here filming this week? I don't think we can say actually. Right? No, no. Some very important special subscription platform was filming this week here, and they interviewed me. <clears throat> and I know that you have said that before, and that's what you want to do. And I told them, I think that's crazy. And I also told them that this is going to motivate him, right? And I'll always believe in, in Jake and have your back, but that one in particular, you being the world champ in boxing is really hard for me to wrap my head around. I believe in you. <laughs> Thank you, George. But I believe, I, in, I, I, I believe in him too. I believe in him too. But that one, not even a but, I'm just like... <sighs> it is crazy. <sighs> it definitely is crazy. And I like that because it's pushing me. And the funny thing is, though, I know I could do it. My skill level, my natural talent. You have to have the natural talent and the skill that's there. That's that power and speed. And I have those things. And the confidence also comes from me yesterday sparring the former three-time light heavyweight champion of the world and winning all three rounds when we sparred. So it's very realistic. And that's right now think two years from now, three years from now, when I actually go to make that run, I'm going to be a whole nother level of boxer. And I think it's just the story behind it where like everyone doubted me. Everyone goes from like fighting influencers to fight a real boxer, to fight a UFC champion, to fight a real boxer. Like then I just become the world champion for fun just to prove that I could do it. I think that's an incredible story. Oh yeah. Kids will definitely talk about you in school. Like do the no, <laughs> well no, they already no, like, are. Like I'd be like do the projects and shit, you know? What I mean, like I don't want to be like Jake. Everybody doubted him. Well, and they already. Like, I think a lot of them already are. But I think this one seems like the final. Would you say this is like the final? Like fuck you to the to the purists and the people that say that you haven't fought a real boxer. This seems like you're the, when, with fighting, you know, Richard Hamilton. Um, in this next fight, you're gonna have a real boxer for once, you know. <laughs> Yeah, no, 100%. Because that's been the biggest criticism is fight a real boxer. So this, you could hate me. You could say, oh, this fucking kid, like he's a douchebag. He's loudmouth. He's cringe. He, he did it. Whatever they say, I don't even know. But you have to respect the fact that I'm beating a professional boxer who has 100 amateur fights, uh, who has been in this sport his whole entire life, who has every advantage on me. People will have no choice but to respect that. Will you get fucked up after the fight? Get drunk? Sure. I think so. <laughs> How I long has it been since you partied? Months. <laughs> I don't. I really don't even remember the last time. It's been a while. Do you even care to? Do you even have the drive to do that? If you to celebrate or? Yeah, there there's some moments where it's like, oh, a nice glass of wine would be cool right now. But for the most part, I'm just so focused on the goal. I think afterwards. You know, when you accomplish that and you win and all the hard work pays off, then it's cool to have a little reset and to have some fun because you, the soul and the body needs that. So I'll probably get fucked up for sure. It's going to be a lot of people <clears throat> watching this fight, fans, commentators, more fans. 
and some people that aren't really your fans. You had a little back and forth with a man named KSI, your brother's business partner on Twitter, a couple days ago. Got pretty nasty. What do you what do you think message you're trying to send to to the UK with this with this uh, fight? Man, you know, I don't really have a message for them. I think this kid, this old kid, he's pushing 30 years old talking about his YouTube collection and shit like that. But it's apparent to me that this kid is just has hyper jealousy towards me. It reeks through social media. You know, he tried his music career. It failed. He bought every single feature that he possibly could. uh, And the streams are still going down. No one gives a fuck about the music. It's dog shit. Like, actually, his fans could sit there and say, well, I play every day, but it's it's dog shit. And they'll grow up and realize that the music that they liked as a kid was dog shit. His music is whatever. But now he cancels that and is coming back into the sport of boxing, sees Jake Paul made forty five million dollars last year, sees the headlines, everything that's doing the momentum I'm building for myself. And is like, OK, I'm going to start to follow in those footsteps to try and be like Jake. Um, and like I said, again, he feels the need to call me out on a daily, weekly basis, nonstop. And it's like, cool, you could talk, you could say all of these things, no problem. I know you're doing it to drive your businesses and to drive the promotion for your fight and to build your name up. But at the end of the day, bro, you don't want to fight me. So when it boils down to that, man versus man, he's scared of me. He's ducking me. And he knows that. He knows I would beat the fuck out of him. Otherwise, why is he waiting for Alex Wasabi? Why is he doing a warm-up fight? He says he wants to have all these warm-up fights because he knows I'll beat the fuck out of him. So all this shit back and forth, when it comes down to who really wants it and who's backing their shit up, it's me. I'll fight him whenever, wherever. I don't give a fuck if he's A-side, whatever. I'll do it for free. I'll fucking kill this kid. What happens if Alex Wasabi beats KSI, Logan? Prime, well, prime drops in value 80%. <laughs> no, I'm I'll just be saying, honest with you. I'm just saying KSI beat you. <laughs> so what happens if Alex it's Wasabi... Not, just, it's not possible. Then, 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 Alex, not, then Alex Wasabi is a god. It's just not possible. Like, what <laughs> you're describing is... It would have to be the most lucky... <laughs> a like, part of me is like... Dude, like, bro, we always see some crazy shit happens. But what if he gets in there and he's like... And just fucks him up. And we're all like, oh, damn. That you, just fucking happened right now. you see your face, like your <laughs> smiling face? Yeah. Alex Wasabi is potentially the happiest person I've ever seen in my life. Like I would, I would think. What are you he, talking about? People can't be happy. What about happy punches? It, it, what? What was that? Nothing. What? I don't know what just happened there. <laughs> I just want to say this, Alex. Alex Wasabi, you, you're right. Maybe, maybe you know, a smiling face shouldn't be that indicative of someone that's not gonna p- clobber their opponent. But I would see Alex Wasabi being more likely to be interested in collecting rare butterflies or like not and i'm not about he can fight he can get he can fight don't get me wrong but i do ksi is and listen here i'm gonna i want to segue back into this conversation it's the fight everybody wants to see i'm sorry the fight that everybody wants to see because in our eyes at least ksi is a dog uh, an animal you're a fucking animal bro like an actual animal, and I he would hasn't love really this. done shit though. You, he that's... won a controversial win because Logan got two points deducted. That's the only reason he won. So yeah, that's great and all. And Logan wasn't nearly the fighter that he is now. If Logan and KSI fought again right now, I Logan want, would I beat want, the fuck any, out of him. I don't want any part in this. I'm, I mean, you're, not, not, you're not having a part. This is my opinion. So it's like if if Logan and KSI fought again right now, Logan would beat the fuck out of him. So he won kind of. Whatever, everyone thinks he's like this tough kid. I don't want and I, and I, when he steps into the ring with me, I'm going to expose him for the fucking bitch that he is. I knock him oh out God. two rounds. Hold on easy. a second. That's my business part you're talking about. <laughs> and, I will say, and I will say this. I told you to keep me out of this. And yet you tweeted at me and you said, <laughs> you said whoever retweets this right gets $1,000 to the fight. And then you said, hey, KSI, I'm going to send Logan $1,000 to win to you because you've, you've won the retweet Yeah, because he retweeted it. And you sent me $1,000 on <laughs> yeah. Apple Pay. Yes. Brother, I'm taking my girl to dinner with that money. No, you have to send it I'm to KSI. I'm not sending it to KSI. You Thank you. To. He won the contest. So thanks on you behalf st- of KSI well, then stole, for a nice Mastro's you, dinner. Well, well, well done. I'm, I'm, you're, you're a man of your word, and I really appreciate that. No, would no, I, would I, been, I would have been remiss by not you know, bringing this up. This is the I think it's a conversation that people want to hear, and I, I, I guarantee that 
stoking this fire makes you all millions of dollars in the future. I'll, of course, see none of it. The thing but, is, is he's never gonna, he's uh, never gonna you know, fight me. He's never gonna fight me. No, I don't, okay, I don't, I don't believe that's true. I don't, I don't I, think that's true. I, I, I think that I would bet a million dollars that he never fights me. I would who, bet you a million dollars. I would. That's what I'm saying. I would. I'll shake on it right now. He's no, never, he just he's doesn't never want gonna, to make the bet. He's it's never. He he's think. never gonna fight. Me. No, I don't have the capital because I lost all my money in crypto, crypto. NFTs. Yeah. Well, we could yes. we could do it as a as a loan. I'm just kidding. a loan bet. Do you, do you know I said that once on one podcast? I said that my Mike mentioned that you made forty five yeah. million, and I was like, no, nope. he, he yeah. blew it and, 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 and everyone it. believed. They it ran with it and started interviewing. Like <laughs> Forbes interviewed me. They go, did you lose all of your money? And I was like, bro, my uh, fuck you, Logan. Like, Dog, hold on, no, not fuck me. We're fucking having fun and making what are very clearly jokes. Well, people in this country have the intellect of a fucking cat. It's not oh. this country, buddy. All around uh, the everywhere, everywhere. The, the idea that what you uh, say at so sarcastically that everyone in the room understands that sarcasm is going to be interpreted as sarcasm by the general bro, public. Bro, my business is, partner in my fund was like, "Hey, man, did was Logan like <laughs> serious? Shut the fuck like, up. why are yeah. people so fucking stupid? Not him. Sorry, not, Jeff. Not him. Of course. <laughs> speaking <laughs> Sorry, speaking dude. of stupid comments, does this ever get? Actually, to no. Jeff knew that it was fake. Someone else. It wasn't Jeff. All right. It Jeff was someone else. But whatever. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. It was. It was someone. I don't know who it was. Someone asked Jeff, I think. <laughs> hey, you. Yeah, you, viewer. You got a bush? Ew. Ugh. You definitely do if you haven't tried the best product from our sponsor today, Manscaped. Taking control of your bush is important. A bad hair day could get you roasted in the comments, but a bad bush day, that can ruin the perfect night. So stop wrestling with your balls and start treating them right by using our discount code LOGAN for 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. The Performance Package 4.0 is the way to go. It's designed to reduce grooming accidents and shave hair on loose skin thanks to a ceramic blade and advanced skin-safe technology. Get 20% off free plus free shipping with the code LOGAN at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use your code LOGAN whether you need to cut weight Pube wait for fight night or get your boys Polaroid worthy. Manscaped has your back. Buy Manscaped now. Four years. Bad luck. Back to the show. Does it get to you when people say your shit is staged? <laughs> it's the most annoying fucking thing. Oh, it has world. to be. We were talking about serious stuff. It, no, but it's a, no, well, but it's a great stuff. question. Imagine it's a great question. Your, no, I, imagine it's so, I got to ask this too. It's so fucking annoying, bro. I work my fucking ass off for them to just like discredit it. But it's also a compliment in many ways because they simply can't believe how good I am. And they have to come up with any fucking excuse to comprehend it. Um, and, and it sucks. It sucks. But the people that believe that are also the lowest of intellect. It's illegal to rig a fight. You literally would go to prison for a long fucking time. So, do you, you know, do and, you, and you think Showtime, the most prestigious boxing company in the world, Steven Espinoza would allow that, would even let that cross his fucking table the, sh the whole entire company would be shut down the fucking the, everything would go to shit the people that think that my fights are i think it is a compliment because they can't comprehend how good i am but also fuck them it must it was because you said something in an interview recounting what i said you said something about uh accidentally n knocking you out or or something or actually knocking him out or something like and everyone was like, how could you get accidentally knocked out? Yeah, you make one fucking mistake. You fucking put your guard down for a second, like Tyrone Woodley did, and you get knocked out. I To me, it makes perfect fucking sense. Fucking idiots. But people ran with Bird that. Bird brains, like, bro. No. It's people like that on the internet. And like I see these videos where this guy, and there's a TikTok kid who goes around New York and shit, and he asks people the oh most my God. basic questions. I see it all the time. Bro. These are the people that are allowed to fucking vote, that are dr allowed to drive a car. <laughs> and it's fucking says, absurd. When they bro. get it right, he goes, how many states are there in the United States? And they say like 80. And he goes, yes. Yes. And he they always says, says yes, yes. Afterwards. Like it's the right answer. Yeah. And they're like, they're like, yeah, <laughs> bro, these people. But why do you, but why even concern that? That's why I was asking. Like, why even concern yourself? I talk to Logan about this all the time. And it's like, Jeff was the originator back when I used to struggle with it. And I, I'm not saying you do. He would be like, yo. The general public, for the most part, is like a group of kids playing on a playground, having fun, fucking around, being idiots. If you walked by and they're like, hey, you're stupid, would you go beat up the 12 year olds and get all pissed off? <laughs> no, you just keep doing what you were fucking doing. Well, bro. how many times did he say it to me? 
Twice. <laughs> 15? Oh, fuck Who him. He got to go. <laughs> he gotta Who go. cares? Not Step Brothers. He's not going to wipe your face in white dog poop. Like, well, dude, it just discredits him. And every time they post a highlight or something, no, it's just like a it mass dis It discredits. Of and then there's millions of people who Believe like. It. Believe it, because they don't know anything. But else. that's the world that we're living in. It's sad. That's the no I one. Fucking I'm hate, his friend, and I, I hate, believed it. I hate the world we're fuck you, George. <laughs> I, I I hate the world we're living in. That's what I'm saying. It, it sucks. It's so it's so bad. Misinformation and disinformation on the internet right right now is rampant because nobody has the intellect to be able to form opinions for themselves. They're sheep. They just go in any direction that's that they're herded. I formed an opinion. Just last week. I think I think one percent of the people <laughs> who are watching social media have the capabilities to form their own opinion on shit. I, I'm in the one percent because I formed a strong opinion and the internet had a strong <laughs> reaction. Oh yeah. <laughs> Bro, I was like, why the fuck did you do this? Like you could have just <laughs> not what I said. You could have just not tweeted about this fucking That's movie. And now, bro, like, bro, you, you have to understand, like, some people mess up and make a bad movie. I haven't seen it. But like, bro, he's a legend. Key and legend. Peele. Like Jordan. Well, he said that. that. He that. Did I you loved, say that in the yeah. tweet? I led yeah, with it. 100%. I love Jordan Peele. Doesn't seem. Like I it. thought Get Out was one of the best movies ever. I yeah. I put that in the, top ten. Top ten yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like, but this movie fucking sucked. It affected me so much so that I had to write a dissertation. <laughs> it's broken up into twelve different tweets. I was on the I was on the plane pissed because I went to a movie expecting the, the the most like i had very high expectations it's like it's like you know what it's like you ask your mom for an xbox 360 for christmas right and she has the resources and the means to do it not only that she's pretty much teasing the whole the whole time leading up that santa claus is going to bring you an xbox 360 you're going to get it you're guaranteed to get the xbox christmas morning comes you're in your last present you don't have the xbox yet you open up your last present it's pop tarts that's pretty disappointing <laughs> that's that's our life <laughs> Where why? Just no 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 no. Okay no 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 no. He's not. So this is this is this is what I kind of want to get into. Can we blur I, my face while we're doing this whole segment? No stop. He's stop. trying to be in a Jordan no, Peele movie. It doesn't. No. Listen. So, to me. so am I, listen Jordan. <laughs> Jordan, bro, I'm a great actor. Yeah, he he wins his fights. Yeah. No, I I, I, I would do hope I could be in your movie. Yeah. I would hope. That Jordan Peele doesn't take the tweet personally. It's not an attack on Jordan Peele. I just didn't like this particular piece of art that he made. This cinema and and film in general is art. It's no different than when you go to a gallery and you're like, that's a cool piece. Ah, not so much. I'm still going to watch all his movies. And by the way, don't fucking listen to me. Go see the movie. Form your own opinion. It's called Nope. We haven't even said the name of the movie. But the, it, the, the thing that pissed me off was that everybody immediately retreated to basically demeaning you and calling you a moron like like clearly it was a i'm not saying you're right or wrong because i haven't seen the movie but their their immediate reaction was this movie went over logan paul's head because he's logan paul and that's just like dude come on bro like he wrote a fucking well crafted and, and, but, but also, thesis paper yeah. on the fucking and film again it goes back to those are the types of people who are tweeting off of their mom's wife i was i was i was <laughs> twitter for android semi yeah. attempted this this what i'm about to say is, was childish but i was attempted to offer a, every single one of the people Our who response. called me dumb uh uh ten thousand dollars if they can prove that they have an I, I, higher iq than me I would pay for their flight to Orlando to go get their IQ checked. And if you have a higher IQ than me, I'll pay you $10,000 because I guarantee you should you do that. You fucking don't. You should do that. Yeah, but it's, not about, it's not about intelligence. Be... Here's what it's about. It's about a person having an opinion and starting a conversation. There's no need to attack yeah, yeah. intellect or anything like that. And by the way, my opinion doesn't fucking matter. And this is going to hurt some of your feelings out there. You people who are holding on to that artistic integrity and want to pretend you understand the values of this very confusing very stretched thematic film your opinions don't matter either we are all just fucking stupid ants running around on a planet pretending we're significant we're not That's nothing matters so have you seen true. the nasa telescope that just captured a galaxy in clear daylight well 13.8 well, billion years <laughs> it, 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 and 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 we sit here on this rock wanting to pretend that we matter and in a way you know we do it to each other but also you're not important you know so you are jake paul because you're gonna knock out uh richard hamilton <laughs> we have to get this poor guy stand right <laughs> we say it one more time hasim ramen noodle jr got it perfect it sounds like usman calamari who is that but I, I i i i 
stand by your philosophical views, but I also do think that in the opposite way, everything does matter in this world, in this timeline, and that the butterfly effect of every little movement that you ever make influences generations to come. And because we are humans with dopamine and happiness and joy and pain, while we are living, those things can be altered, hopefully for the positive. And that's why doing things for the world and for yourself and the changes in the influence that it spreads to even your aunts, uncles, even if you have one follower, that matters. I, Great job, I, I, hear, I hear you. You're, and you're absolutely right. At this particular phase of my life, I'm living in like a super kind of existential macro way. And a lot of the moves I make and a lot of the chatter I hear, especially online, at the end of the day, that's, that's, that's my piece, I think. Um, it wasn't until I did ayahuasca where my view on that whole entire thing changed. Sorry, wait, what's that now? Talking ayahuasca. About you did ayahuasca? It's a medicine. Oh, but, I know exactly what it is. But um, Do you want to- it, allowed, it allowed me to see uh, in a three-dimensional, three-dimensional way the butterfly effect. And we all know what the butterfly effect is. And like, obviously, if you do one thing, what, how does it affect the rest of history and the universe? Um, it's like a butterfly flaps his wings on one side of the earth. A storm is created on the other. So during ayahuasca, I got to see the butterfly effect of like my career and my influence over kids in boxing. And it painted this illusion of kids and millions of kids watching me through the TV and on their phones. And then the next day, them going out to get motivated into the gym and become boxers and because i got to see that so vividly and feel it emotionally during this ayahuasca ceremony my viewpoint on that exact thing changed i just don't like the fact that if you're standing on the moon hypothetically and you hold your thumb up and you cover planet earth everything you ever knew every experience you ever had everything that ever mattered to in your life is pretty much no longer exists yeah but that's yeah but that's an uh, it is that's it's a, just behind your thumb no but that's a <laughs> no but that's a great statement it goes back to like a lot of like the theoretical you know outlooks from the past like we we are what we have everything that we facts, know is, is is relatable to only us right yeah. so it's like if, if you remove that important fact of the matter then yes that would that would stand up but like I don't know what's happening in Galaxy 47-C, so I don't really give a fuck about it. I know what's happening in this room right now, and I know that if I do something, it has an impact on someone's life, right? So, like, I, I, I like that whole, like, we're a grain of sand. If, it, if you want to keep yourself in check when you start getting stressed out about bad things happening in your life, oh, we live on a spinning bro rock in the middle of space. But at the end of the day, we are what we got. So, like, you, got, you have to consider the impact of the things you say and the things you do. And, and, and to Jake's point... I think I think the real right answer there is we need to sit somewhere in between the two, not overthinking every single impact we have and not underthinking every single impact we have. You need to be somewhere in the middle. And and we're we're reaching a point kind of right now where people are starting to not think as much about the impact they're having. They're just say, they're saying fucked up shit, liking the ripple it makes, liking the, the compensation and money that comes back in their way and not thinking about what it does to society. We're thinking, I think we're starting to think less and less about people and what, and how we're, how we're affecting them with our words and actions, which I don't like. What do you, do you think that's true? Yeah, but I also think there's an awakening happening. Um, Same time. And I think people are getting sick of the social media platforms and the, like basically the social dilemma and being addicted to their phones. Mm. I think people are awakening to it. I think People are starting to realize, like my friends and I are starting to realize that this phone, as much as it's great, it could also start to harm you. And I think that's an important message to spread is like set screen times. Our friend, I won't say his name because it's pretty bad. We looked at his screen time, 15 hours. So bad. Fucking absurd. Is it Marcos? No, 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 no. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a useless, like he, he's not doing anything. It's right. mostly Instagram. Set screen times. I have screen time on my. What do you set it at? Um. For all social media platforms daily, an hour and a half. Oh, that's good. If I can and, get to that. And that's my through. fucking job. So the most of the time I'm on there, it's like How do you actually do that? being productive. Nah, I'm yeah, not talking about how you set a screen, screen time. I'm saying you as a social media kid and a creator, how do you spend? Because you know how much it, I'm, on, I'm on my phone and you, you um, 
belittle me for it. And you're right. Yeah, no. And, and, and if I have to do something, if I'm doing more work on it, I just enter the screen time passcode that I know for myself and I'll continue to post it, right? and, to do, and to finish the job. But it's just a reminder to be like, oh, I've been on a little bit too much today because you you. Yes, it's part of your job, but like also you could just start to pick it up. We all just like have that habit of like, oh, nothing's going on. Instagram, what's going on? Looking for that next. Just stimulus. looking yeah. like you don't even realize it's you're so doing bad. it. That's the fuck the part. And so the screen time is just a reminder. And I encourage kids out there right now to set screen time reminders and to, to limit yourself and to try to be as productive as possible with your phone. Use it as a tool, but don't let it take away from your happiness because that can happen. And I think a lot of people are starting to realize that there was a study that came out that Gen Z uh, out of all the generations right now are using social media less than everyone else because they're hip to it and they're starting to see how it detri is detrimental so to their bad. happiness. Wow. And the only the only platform that hasn't gone down in activity uh, since last year was TikTok. That's the only one where kids are the, the screen time is still going up. Uh, but but people are awakening to it's this. It's crazy to hear this story while you're surfing TikTok while talking. And I'm trying to I'm trying to quote the <laughs> I'm trying to quote no, I'm just, the that, is, that is really interesting. More, but I actually got off my phone too. They get mad at me for not texting back because I generally do no, it's not good. Have, and and, and, and I I'm wanna, so much happier, but bro. Piper Sandler's most recent Gen Z consumer survey. It reported less use of every social media app less, less, last fall except for TikTok. Do you think that's it's possibly because TikTok is simply consuming all? It, the algorithm you know is so fucking good. Bro, it's, it's That's ridiculous. the one I get lost on. Yeah, of course. It's, you, you can't. And it's just so funny. Like, it's just great. It's you great. know, you talked about uh, <laughs> interrupting like people's happiness. There's also another problem it causes. I was watching a, a, a doc, a mini doc on this the other day. It, 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 social media does a terrible thing that is fragmenting your focus so like your ability to f like your ability to one be bored to conceptualize and create new ideas and then two your ability to then focus and execute on those ideas are dependent on your ability to stay f to stay focused on a, on a task and if every time you start to get down a a pathway just a little bit you you go like this and you fuck with instagram for 10 minutes or you respond to a couple text messages or a couple dms or make a phone call or facetime you're fragmenting your focus and removing yourself from that path that's going to lead to a final goal right and and that scares me in in every day i try to practice putting the phone down for extended periods of times when i want to think about something and when i want to come back to my inner peace and happiness I'll put the phone down purposely for 45 minutes and do a 10 to 20 minute meditation in that time. And it literally recalibrates me. So many thoughts are flowing, creativity, happiness. And I feel like myself again, because you can get lost in the jumble of calls, emails, texts, social media, posting, all of this stuff. And then in the morning, everyone's first habit is to Grab pick up the phone, the phone yep. and look. What's going on? And that is fuck. That fucks so your mind up. Like you cannot get into the habit of that. I've broken that habit through waking up. I stand up. I go to the restroom. Then I come back to bed and I do a ten minute meditation every morning. And my happiness levels are noticeably and increasingly going up because of that. Listen. And and then when I come to the phone, it's not like anxiety right away and like fuck. I have all these things. I come. I'm be coming to the phone. The phone's not fucking me up listen to my take it's hard for me to get out of bed i'm not a morning person i never have been i hope it changes one day probably maybe when i have a kid and, and he or she's waking up real early but i look at the phone the first thing in the morning because the work the texts the things that i know i have to do excite me i get stimulated in a way that makes me want to get out of bed and active and excited about my day. It's like a, it's almost like a, my first burst of caffeine. And for me, it wakes me up. It, it gets my brain going. Otherwise, man, like I, I could sleep <laughs> forever. <laughs> I'm a sleeper. I think that's more of a rare case where that, yeah, you're all an that, outlier. all yeah. that work yeah, you excites be, you. Yeah. I think for most people, it creates anxiety. A hundred percent. Okay. Definitely does for me. But, um, another thing to get you out of bed, plug your phone into your bathroom next to your shower. So when you get up to go look at your phone, you're already, next no, no. To your did you hear what I said? No, I know. It it's hard you. for me to get out of bed. Yeah, but you want to go towards your phone. Yeah, so you would get out of bed. That's what I'm saying. 
No, bro, that's hard. Damn, bro, I wish there was a sponsor for this show that I make no money off of. Well, perfect for you, Mike. I am a Barstool <laughs> ambassador. I got signed by Barstool, and this episode is brought to you by the Barstool Sports Book. I haven't signed up for the Barstool Sports Book just yet. Well, new players can sign up with my exclusive promo code Logan1000. Listen to this. You're going to get your first bet 100% risk free up to $1,000. Make your first deposit today, and if your first bet loses, Get an equal free bet up to $1,000 in sportsbook bonus cash. That is Logan 1000. Additional terms and conditions apply. Faster. See the app for details. Must be physically present in Arizona, Colorado, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, or Virginia to bet. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In Tennessee, call or text the Tennessee red line. 800-889-9789. Well, back to the show. Right. One person that's not <laughs> stopping <laughs> or slowing down the use of their phone. You guys have been, been running this sphere for a while, bro. YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. There's a new sheriff in town, man. <laughs> it's not Jake Paul and Logan Paul. It's not, you know, One Direction. None of them are the top Gs anymore, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> There's a man by the name Andrew Tate. God damn it. The mayor of these parts. And by parts, I mean this spinning rock that we all reside on. <laughs> <sighs> Fuck. Okay. I, well, sorry about this, but I have a new show coming out, a sports <laughs> show. And it's right next door to Impulsive, a uh, weekly sports show. I've told you about this. It's called BS with Jake Paul. By the time this is out, the first episode will drop. So go and watch it. And I want to go more in depth about me versus Andrew Tate. Wow. But here we are. So we could talk about that side well, note uh, announcement. Just, no, yeah, just, and please go watch the episode. Hold on a second. What, what, what you mean you versus Andrew Tate? Because I, 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 no, I, I'm saying, I'm not saying a fight. I'm saying like our back and forth. He's, he talks shit about yep, me and that. like says he wants to beat my ass and, or can beat my ass and all this stuff. I think there's a better fight to make. I'm not saying you even want that fight, but just for him to hear. I think you're focused on boxing boxers, people that are in the in the space that you you reside. Jake, in. I know, I know, he's been talking shit about you, bro. Yeah, but with your blessing, can I beat the shit out of Andrew fucking Tate? One hundred percent, one hundred percent. Will you, you let should. me do that for you? One hundred percent. Yeah, I don't think he would fight us. Come on, he's the top G. Nah, come on, he's the top G. Nah, I don't think he would fight us. Come on, he's he, isn't he like a four time kickboxing world champ or something? You would know, fanboy. You even I, cut your hair like him. You, can you stop? <laughs> I told you. I didn't want to stop. Hey, wow. he, he followed Mike on, on uh, Instagram today. He tripped. <laughs> oh my God, guys. Come here, come here. Everybody, everybody. David, roll, roll, roll. David, David. Roll. Can you please, can yes, you please, just follow can me. you ple please save me on this one? Just say, I don't ever no, 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 ask no, that no, you no, say that okay, you're joking. All right, all right, all right. Um, not only Mike, I think we are all, including the world right now, enthralled Thank by you. what the fuck yes, is happening yes, with Andrew yes, Tate. Yes. If you do not know, Andrew Tate is the the bald guy, kind of looks like a penis from the neck up. Uh, the earthworm from SpongeBob. The Alaskan bullworm. Yeah, the Alaskan, Alaskan bullworm. He, and he, he's the guy who talks, I mean, his takes are hot. He has a lot of misogynistic, real sexist takes that some people actually see the validity in. Because some things he says, maybe not the, the, the so misogynistic parts of it, but uh, regarding like uh, he, he's like a free state. Uh, he trolls. Uh, he trolls. Now, it, so, it, sometimes. Some people, he mixes well, in with, with his beliefs with trolling. So you never know when he's actually being serious. Well, some people think, yes, correct. And some people think he's always trolling. Some people don't think he's trolling at all. He has, he has thoughts that are sometimes based in personal experience, sometimes based in opinion, sometimes based on facts that he can or can't prove. Um, he's had some major battles over the past you know two weeks because he's been doing the podcast circuit so he went up against i think i think portnoy did a a relatively good job with him and i think hassan did a very good job with him by uh by by debating him using facts and statistics and he, he his, can you his, say what some of his takes are yeah, i mean he has takes on women driving and he he has any accident he's ever been involved in has has been in a car driven by a woman. So in his personal experience, women are not as safe a drivers as men. And while that is true for his personal experience, statistically, given the empirical evidence that is presented by the insurance industry and every every other statistical study, that isn't the case. What else? Though? So he like had a major battle with Dave Portnoy on IQ and how 
uh, men fall to the to to based on the bell curve to the to the sides of the IQ um, level. So men are the stupidest and the smartest people on earth. And as another way to uh, push men up as the authoritarian and 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 old, uh, uber intelligent alpha species or, or, or gender, you know, uh, he said that the smartest people are men. Dave Portnoy found a study that stated that the smartest person in the world was in fact a woman. And what he and what he does is generally speaking, he then retreats using the idea that since the world lied about COVID, we cannot trust empirical evidence on the internet, which Hassan brought up and said, listen, what you're saying right now is that not trusting empirical evidence in your belief would have would have devaluated and made all of the scientific discovery and achievement that we've had on this planet completely impossible because all of it was based on empirical evidence, data collection, statistical analysis. So none of it would have ever, literally none look, of it would look, have happened. I was, I was amused by him. I think, I think a lot of people are, he's, he's developed a, For sure. a really impressive great salesman. Great, women, and he women speak don't his, like listening to his, his street. Some, some women do. Some, do. some, some do. women do like Really? Yes. Yeah. My it, girlfriend doesn't have a problem with anybody. Nobody. But she hears his voice. She goes, please turn that off. That's exactly what he wants. And, uh, so he's playing everyone like a fiddle. Well, that and that's why and that's why I'm not overly pissed because because no, so people as, don't understand that they're sheep. Again, goes back to earlier. But, but I'm but I, here's here's the issue. They're giving with, him exactly what he wants, and I he's sitting that. there smiling, making Money, millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. Do you and know how he's just making can't do stop. Do you know, do people how? just can't stop. Yeah, he he has like these courses that he sells. It's a fucking pyramid scheme, bro. It's it is like a picture perfect pyramid scheme. What's it called? Like the Hustler Academy. I just want to say, though, just so I could have some peace of it. Like, so he followed me last week. Can, can you see this? On, can you see this? So he followed me up until last week. I, I just seen that this is a follow, but he he was a fanboy. Look at this message. It says accept message request from Andrew Tate. Well, what if it was like, and, yo, bitch, like when I see you in no, Romania, but then why would he unsend it? He unsent it, but it still shows that he tried to send me a. Uh, a message at some point and he called me out like two years ago and i remember seeing it, i was just like swipe up like okay who the fuck is this guy like don't care that was when everyone was calling me out and then some interviewer recently asked like do you know who or would you fight andrew tate and that's when i seen this guy like starting to fucking pop up all the over the internet i was like yeah. oh that's andrew tate but what i'm saying is is that andrew if my brother doesn't fuck you up i will <laughs> and it has to go down but I, I I don't think he gets in the ring with one of us. I I think I, it's too big of a risk for him. And no, for what? Why? I mean, because he's alpha male, right? Top That's G. his whole entire thing. Uh, and when ooh. he loses, he will lose to one of us, either one of us that he fights. He will lose, and his whole shtick, and all the women will be like, "Yeah!" And like his whole shtick goes out the window. When I'm shopping the idea around to my advisors, they're concerned that he he won't be as popping as he is right now or as relevant in you know december or january which is i think he's got runway i think he's got a little bit of runway i'm not i'm not saying he's so gonna I, be like but but for how for how long because when when the holes are poked in his theories which they are they're being right he went on a little press run he got super famous super quick and but when the holes are poked and he does you know get humanized in a way where he looks like a fucking idiot the 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 stick is never as been a, that's never been enough. That's happened to a lot of politicians. That's happened to but a lot of But what does he do now? He just people. keeps just because, saying be, shit. Yes, because listen, here here beyond the the stuff that could be disproven by statistical analysis or empirical evidence, he has opinions that don't need to be backed. Well, stop by saying that. empirical no, like listen, you know okay, something. Okay, fine. Stop. The, by, by th he has opinions that don't need to be backed <laughs> by facts instead of empirical evidence facts. that don't need to be backed by facts. facts. Here's here here's the fucked up and funny thing about it. Andrew Tate is actually a product of the people that hate him the most. Let me say that again. Andrew Tate is a product of the people who hate him the most. He was birthed because the left and, and the way that, the, that things have been swinging because of woke and social media and the way things have been moving for the past several years have swung so far left and so far woke and people are so tired of being force fed the idea of rights for pregnant men, which is something that like, yo, like men who get pregnant deserve rights. Like that's one of the things that people are really screaming about right now. He's one of the people that is going to swing the counterbalance back because for every there's a, a classic Isaac Newton statement for every action. There is a reaction. 
po- there is an equal and opposite reaction. God damn. So when people <laughs> push one way, there's going to be somebody on the other side saying, yo, guess what? I don't think women should be driving. The shit goes like this, boys. There's a lot of boys in this room. I was thinking, that's crazy. Andrew Tate would love this Yeah, but shit. Dave's sitting like a girl. And Milton's caulking the wall. My yeah, what's going coaches. on right now? Caleb, but, just do a quick 180. But I, <laughs> Just keep talking, Mike. Yeah. Dave's, <laughs> Mil- my boxing coach caulking a wall. But do you understand <laughs> how fu- how funny that is? Like, like all of these things are actually a product of the side that's trying to fight against it just as hard. It is interesting. It's and it and it swings like this. And right now, you're starting to see the swing back, and people saying, "Yo, we don't want any more woke bullshit. We're I, gonna we're gonna bring us back to 1940. Fuck this shit, man. All, he go. I Jordan. just think it's I, funny I, that I love when people get upset at him. I'm not saying I side with them. I don't like. I, I just love watching people bicker about shit it's to me amusing. that doesn't matter. Yeah, it's, it's entertainment. Amusing. Bro, watching pe- like the way he talks to me. I I I don't ever watch shit online. I try not to. I, I try to like you know That's, go to the that, picnic and fucking have time with my girlfriend or shit like that. But I clicked on one of his shit, bro. Fucking fifty hours down the drain. I go, what the fuck just happened? It was a blink. Bro. Fifty hours, you say, huh? So minutes. you're the real fan. Boy. Fifty minutes. Well, you said fifty hours, so <laughs> oh, that's two. That's two days two straight. Days. Is there one time I can mess up with nope, none of you we'll guys? Catch it. Don't think so. Gang banging me from both fucking <laughs> ends. Well, that also isn't quite true. Because uh, do you know what a gang bang is? No, I don't. <laughs> now what? It could two oh, classify as a gang bang? Yeah, yeah. No, it's not enough, right? I should know that. <laughs> oh, I actually d- I didn't know I messed it up. Oh, okay, my bad. I'm being a dick, bro. I'm sorry. We, you know I love you. No, I don't know. You yell oh, at me all the time. You he actually that, you knocked said, out that guy. He li- today, he, hey? uh, oh yeah, uh, Jake's sparring partner went down hey, hard. Hey, why today, did bro. you do that? Why did you do that, bro? This is you're the problem. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're the problem. Why did you no? But how did you do that? <laughs> I listened to what you were saying because I love you. Yes, thank you. I appreciate it. But yeah, no, Jake's sparring partner went no, up shut today. Up. Eddie was just bro, like, bro, shut, shut up. Because media's no, going to run with yeah, this. So wait, do you want to tie up. that off? You're literally a part of the problem. Keep the friendly shit off the podcast. I didn't bring it up. No, but like, it's 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 it's, it's just... But also, he, no, nobody... He te- he, nobody. Jake, Jake, Jake. He, <laughs> he thinks... He texted Jeff that. He, he texted Jeff in writing. When Jeff said, who is that? He said, Jake's sparring partner. Bro, <laughs> but it might have been, bro you're I, a dumbass. I'm a, I tell jokes. Yeah, exactly. This is, he's the problem. <laughs> and you are the problem child. The child. Like, let's work together, man. <laughs> we'll solve something together, bro. Like, yeah, I mean, how you want to tie it up? I don't really give a no, fuck. No, I don't know. I, I, we're I, just topic, getting warmed up. No, I was, I'm talking no, about no, the, not last the, podcast, topic, the last topic. Just, that just the tape. Just the tape. By the way, oh, I, I just think I just think it's funny that the top G is a fanboy, and <laughs> he runs with this whole thing like, "What color is your Bugatti?" Andrew, like, it's not cool to tell kids that they need a Bugatti to be cool. My my Bugatti that I have is in a Morgan Stanley bank account, compounding interest and hundreds of millions of dollars. So that's that's cooler than having a fucking Bugatti. Goddamn, save your money, kids. That one, I, saving that your one money is. is Way better. Cars are definitely depreciating assets. Materialistic sure. shit. It's cool. Well, also, but that's his whole brand but, identity. But, but, but so listen, that's what I'm yeah. asking. What his? It's what? it's 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 not good. It's not good. And all these little fanboys and kids are gonna fucking freak out. And you know they think he's God. He has like a cult like following. Um, and they're gonna find in their lives if they follow his advice that they're gonna be met with a ton of shit well the biggest part of it that that rubs me the wrong way and i like save everything else that could be argued or whatever is like humility dude there is nothing less cool than talking about yourself and what you have like like dude if you got it you just got it it's just the fact of the matter like like and i think he's training these kids because i would assume that the majority of his audience are kids right yeah. like it's a tiktok audience 10 to 18 it's kids who it's virgins kids who are virgins who think by watching him they will get laid that's who his audience is but he's but i think he's training them to to not get laid and that's the problem exactly like i no, want exactly. them to get the, laid the, they're, they're pissed n- off at girls because they've never gotten laid and they think by being this alpha male and copying this douchebag who wears giant fucking aviators indo- indoors <laughs> on his fucking podcast. They think that's going to get him some pussy. Like, no, his Andrew Tate's fans are all virgins and they're watching him <laughs> to try to get laid, but they're going to get spit on and slapped by a girl. That's what's going to happen. 
if you talk the way yeah if you talk i mean the, he's some of the takes are, are tough dude like like you if you date a girl most of them are bro, fucking tough if you date a girl that does only fans you're entitled to a percentage of her ink like come on Dude, like, how could you even? Actually, I agree with that. One. That's the no, denial. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, come on, bro. Like, at what point? Why can't you just like, if you date a girl who does OnlyFans, <laughs> well, I'll be like, how much money is she dick. making, bro? Like, you are such a dick, bro. You gotta realize that, like, I, I, I'm here for no value. I just speak, and then people get mad at me. In the no, they don't. No, they no, don't. George, you are the favorite. Let's let's, uh, let's shut the fuck. I want up. everybody here to know that I haven't slept. I took a red eye here, and I haven't slept, and I'm still this wired. I fucking give it my all, man. I'm, I'm not like you in the ring, bro. <laughs> what is wrong with you? I'm, I'm Did black- you smoke? No, I'm like I'm hitting a wall so bad right now. I- I'll leave if you want. No, me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. You're just mad that I knocked out your spot. Bro, brother. shut up. <laughs> this kid, this kid is on a high horse because he not he knocked down a 19 year old. I know. Who weighs no, he's, 20. he's 20. Oh, he's 20. Year old. He's 20 years and he's old. 20. And anyways. A hundred pounds. What do you expect pounds. when you come up against his right bro, hand, he bro? he was beating the shit out of you the whole entire time, I and you caught him with a lucky punch. Lucky? Lucky? <laughs> lucky? Hey. Do you know how long I've been training for this bitch? <laughs> you, uh, he's still not talking to dad? On the podcast? No, yeah. we're talking. We're talking. Are you talking to dad? Did you wish your mom happy birthday today? Yeah, I did. I did. He- Sent her a bunch of nice things. What, what did you get her? flowers bears chocolate balloons like but like an extravagant thing and what did you get her a trip to the ritz carlton spa when she comes to Puerto Rico. those are very so, comparable like I, I, i'm happy with that those are I, only because the spas i got her i got her edible i got her some the world. crazy shit for mother's day like some expensive ass shoes so you've like, always she, been she, so good at gift giving dude oh you've been so did you so did you pick it. that gift out I don't think I did anything. I think my assistant asked me if that's what I wanted <laughs> nice, to do, and nice, I said, "Yeah." Nice. I'm so sorry. I I'm so bad with birthdays and and giving in general. Yeah, that's I told you it was my birthday. So I whipped you do. Yeah. At, at some <laughs> point, though, you should stop celebrating your birthday. It's like all you did was just nothing. I, I'm with you on that. Some people strongly disagree. What? Say again. Yeah. 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 On my birthday, yeah. I'm fucking down for that. On yeah. my birthday, celebrate my mom. Yeah. Yeah, that is I had dope. no fucking choice. I'm a cosmic joke, dog. I was born on April 1st. The worst day to be born ever. You're a joke. Not only that, the jokes get played on me. I have to, I have to self-isolate because everyone just pranks me. Aw. Saddest moment of my life when Jake said he got me a Lamborghini. Bro, shut that, up, bro. Oh, man. You, that you know that? You know, you know that? Like PTSD to this day. Bro, people still, like, I'll look at comments and be like, Jake must be such a shitty person for doing that to his brother and, the like, all this shit. Like, <laughs> get the fuck over it. Like, I can't. It's a joke. I can't. Bro. And that was a good one that it lasted this long. And then you fuck my girlfriend. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like bro, get the fuck over it. Like, Holy he, shit. He fake gave me a Lamborghini, but then I fucked his girlfriend. Like, yeah, I'm the asshole, guys. First off. She wasn't your girlfriend. It, it was a gray area. But it doesn't, it doesn't, but I'll say it again. You guys should do it right now. It, but I'll, it, I'll, 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 I'll say it again. It, <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's it, it's fine. Just say sorry, guys. What's wrong with you? I, I know. I'm, 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 sorry. I'm, 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 I'm genuinely sorry. sorry. I'm sorry oh. that I didn't give you that Lamborghini. Dog, but dog. I, I promise that one day that won't be a prank. And it'll be April Fool's. And I'll, that, I'll have a Lamborghini there. It probably just look exactly like that one. <laughs> But it won't be a prank one day. Oh, Logan, do you have something to say? Uh, I'm sorry for all the torment I put you through in front of the entire internet. It's okay, including with your love interests and 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 your friends. And you know, one day I will make it up to you in a big way. I don't know how yet, but I'll do it. Heck yeah! I don't you, touch me. Yep. I gave you a. Uh, I gave you a pretty crappy birthday present one time too, and. Um, I think you were I think you were quite rude to me as well and about it when I put a lot of a lot of time and effort into You got me a six dollar shrimp. You got me a six dollar <laughs> shrimp that you hyped. That was how I felt when I saw Nope. The same way <laughs> I, Yep. The same way that I felt when Mike for weeks was like, dude, he even said it on a podcast publicly. He goes, This this gift is gonna change your life. Trust me. Best gift, you'll cherish it for the rest of your life. I 
was so excited. He made me drive to the house, thirty minute drive to get there to look at it, and I was I like, was mm, ex- excited about it. Shrimp. It wasn't the shrimp. That wasn't the issue. And, and first of all, on the six dollars, as we know, the enclosure was fifteen hundred. You just like to leave that part out. We all threw in for it. Yeah, it was before I was making money. Maverick Incorporated don't exactly pay the highest wages, Jeff. So relax. How much still, money did you make off of the title? I give Logan the best. Well, that video kind of blew up after he flipped out of me and kicked me out of the house for giving him a shitty birthday present. And then <laughs> fucked my girlfriend. Like, that's what he usually does. But what? No, I mean, that didn't, the last part didn't happen. Although she no. did call me the other day. Is that what she was? I don't know to? what she was. Oh, why was she calling I don't know me? why she called you. But honestly, like, hopefully she figures all her shit out. I don't fucking know. Listen to me. I gave Danny and the team a very specific request to find that shrimp. She had ensured me that she had found it. It was supposed to be this exact color as Prime Hydration, <laughs> the number one sports drink in America. Oh, I being Damn, you uh, passed your gift to not even your assistant, your friend's assistant to get yes, you we were work- it was yes, a team we were, effort. It was a team effort. I get it. Can and, I just say something about Prime? And it was it was gray, it was gray, bro. It wasn't the it, 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 the shrimp sucked. Greg Paul fried it and ate it. That's not true. It got trapped behind a rock and died. I I went to move the rock one day after like after like a week of of not really seeing the shrimp, just thinking he was hiding, and he he, uh, he just split in half. <laughs> he he literally. I'm was, sorry. He, what he got stuck behind the rock, died, and for about a week was just rotting. And when I moved the rock, he just his body just went. Can you can you just please like I'm sorry. <laughs> can you please just empathize with me for one second? No. I, I really did think that I was doing something. And, and and in my heart, I thought that that I was gonna make someone happy. And the way that that turned out with that shrimp disintegrating like that <laughs> it is is an outcome that I could never have. Like, bro, imagine no, me no, so giddy no, about this no, happening, no, no, and no. it just it couldn't have ended any worse. I, no, 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 no. It, you're right, but that also wasn't the issue. Without getting into it, the issue was, and here's the lesson. I'm gonna end with a lesson. You, I, I know it, obviously. But I <laughs> when I was when I realized after my first <laughs> round of initial excitement for the vlog, when I realized I was like, wait, this is actually not my favorite animal. This is like a just fucking stupid little shrimp. And I told Mike, I was like, hey, bro, I don't know if I really like fuck with the gift like you probably said I was gonna. He didn't like that. So I think when you give with expectation in return, you lose. No, yes, but also you're 100% right. And that is the main lesson. The reason I was mad was because the way that I was brought up and the way that most people are brought up is you always just act graciously and thankful for a gift, regardless if it's smelly socks or if it's a fucking a rocket ship. I suck at that. Do you know what I'm saying? Like that's just that's just common. <laughs> that's just common decency. If you get a gift that you hate, I'm not decent, somebody. Mike. Somebody went through Nor the trouble of common. getting you something. You say thank you so much. I appreciate it. Then you disintegrate the thing with a rock <laughs> on per later. De- what, Jeff? We got a problem with PETA? Is it a PETA thing? The thing died on its own accord. Fuck PETA. And by the way, <laughs> PETA ain't exactly got the clout yeah. it used to. PETA's okay? not fucking shit. Yeah, the Peter only PETA we like is Would you Red. consider boxing Peter PETA? Griffin. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> I'll God. box PETA every day of the week. <laughs> all this Bro, is give me all, all the representatives. Why did you all s- of this is what? Getting clipped oh, out? Yes. No, fuck PETA. Suck my nuts, PETA. Fucking put this shit in there, bro. You're not doing shit. You take all of the money and fucking hoard it. We see your fucking profit and loss statements on your fucking books. Fucking scam of a fucking organization who is woke. Shut the fuck up, PETA. Damn. Everyone's scared of these motherfuckers. Everyone's scared to get canceled. PETA doesn't do fucking shit. There was a there was a time. <laughs> what do they do? Go, what do they do? Go to a celebrity red carpet and say, you're wearing a chinchilla. Stop <laughs> it. There was a time where they really throw bitch, red paint that, on really passerby. Bitch, yeah, they would throw what I'm paint. Like, bro, like. Can you imagine you just got fucking fucked, bro? And I don't, I, I, I don't even, I don't even believe. Like I'm for the animals as well. I don't have fur coats and shit like that. Like people shouldn't do that. But also, fuck Peta. Are you <laughs> sure you don't have a fur coat? Because I saw your I'm dog. One hundred percent. No, sure. because I saw your dog come into the gym today. We, I was gonna ask with this. its entire coat shaved off. <laughs> <laughs> with what? its entire coat. Like, 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 put the picture on the screen, dude. Why did you not do like this? He has alopecia. No, no, I shit you not. Yo, here's the funniest part. Yo, it was shaved yo, off in the exact shape yo, as a coat. Don't talk about my fucking <laughs> okay, dog like that. Okay, okay, no, sorry. Yo, I'm gonna slap, not, slap him. I'm sorry, please, dude. We'll I can't get arguments with you anymore. There's no question who's winning, bro. Stop. 
bro. Now, why does my boxing coach look at looks like he's trapped outside, like an aquarium? Looks Caleb like doing one eighty for like me a again. Broke mind, like doesn't know how to do his job. <laughs> he looks like somebody from the Twilight Zone. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like your shrimp before it was crushed by that rock <laughs> in the aquarium. <laughs> oh. Damn, bro. Yeah, this has been great. I. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've learned a lot, and I just want to finish off with a with a poem that I I, don't I love I, your poem that I wrote for Hasim. I'm gonna be real honest. Um, I forgot to finish it on the on the way here, and the podcast was already going. So it's kind of like, can you leave off wherever you leave off, and we'll finish? Yeah, it? Yeah, you guys finish okay, it. Awesome. Okay, line, ready? Line, line, line. <clears throat> okay. Dear Hasim, in only a few days, millions of people will be watching you dream. Sleeping on the canvas like a dead sardine, your dad in the corner regretting being a part of your team. Even though you're used to letting him down, this time millions of people will be watching you drown. And just like all of my other opponents, you'll be the laughing stock of the town. You'll be turned into a meme, a verb, and even a noun. Added to the list of people I knocked out who underestimated me for some money and clout. Your confidence comes from ignorance and you reek of doubt. I know your type, insecure with a loud ass mouth. Enjoy the 15 minutes of fame while you can, because in four more days, nobody will give a damn. Now your turn. Even after the poem, I still don't know this guy's name. Richard Hamilton is a worthy opponent with no fame. I'm so sorry that my friends are lame. That didn't even rhyme with the last thing that he said. By the time Jake's done with this guy, he's going to be dead. Speaking of dead, I can't speak of the dead. <laughs> well, thanks guys for listening to this episode of Impulsive. We understand if you unsubscribe. <laughs> Make sure you get your tickets to Jake's fight. It's going to be at MSG. It's going to be gnarly. I was really enjoying that exercise. And uh, yeah, man, I'm excited. I'm proud of you. I'm extremely proud of you. And I've been watching you in the gym and watching how hard you work time and time and time again, bro. You got this in the fucking bag. Yes, sir. And you are going to be a world champ. Although I will say again, that one's going to surprise <laughs> me. <laughs> right, let's go. Peace. Let's go.